mass grave of alleged pro-Gaddafi soldiers has been discovered in a rebel-controlled area of the country, according to a British newspaper, The Telegraph. The location was swiftly bulldozed after the discovery, suggesting an attempt to cover up the killings. The bodies were reportedly mutilated, adding to recent concerns of human rights abuses by rebels. Such crimes are being swept under the carpet to support NATO's cause in the region, or so says Sukan Chandan, a spokesman for the British Civilians for Peace in Libya movement. Merging about the anti-Islam Norwegian man who killed 76 people in a bomb and gun attack last week, Andres Biren Breivik has reportedly emailed leaders of right-wing extremists in Britain just an hour before carrying out the massacre in the capital, Oslo and a nearby island. In the email, he told the British National and English Defence League that Europe would be, quote, overwhelmed by Islam. The terrorist called the participants, or rather the recipients of his email, Western European patriots, and urged them to forward the message to everyone they knew. Breivik is now in custody awaiting trial. Under Norwegian law, he'll be sentenced to a maximum of 21 years in jail. That is if convicted. To discuss this a little bit further, let's bring in Mr. Peter Ayer. He is a Middle East consultant who is joining us via Skype from London. Thank you very much, sir, to join our broadcast. Uh, why do you think the European intelligence system failed to detect the far-right extremist threat? And do you think they will be able to prevent a repeat of Norway's terror attacks? Yes, good morning. I don't think they'll be able to stop this. Because these, these are, are one-off attacks, and they happen frequently all over the world, these small breakaway groups. I can see a possible connection with the uh, British National Party, another uh, nationalist party in this country, who also uh, tend to show uh, a trend towards being anti-Islamic. But in this case, I think this is a, a diversionary tactic. There's no question at all that this man was a, a very devout Christian Zionist with strong links to Israel, and he'd visited there several times. And uh, I, I think also that he was uh, a Freemason, which puts him in line with uh, what we call the New World Order. So there's a very strong Zionist lead there, and uh, these are fragmented groups. They're quite small. Um, even if there is a connection in the UK, uh, they would be under great pressure uh, to allow this to come out, because uh, uh, many times they try and break up these groups. The government try and close them down. So this would be very sensitive for them. They may support it, but they wouldn't declare it openly. All right. UK media uh, reports show the Norwegian terrorist was in contact with British extremist groups. Why do you think the British government has chosen not to deal with these groups? Um, for the reason I've just said, it's a very sensitive area. And uh, I, I would not think for one minute that there's 100% concrete evidence that that is true. Uh, this could be, um, as I say, a diversionary tactic to take the focus away. Uh, at the end of the day, this is showing a clear sign that it could be a false flag. There's so many incidents that took place prior to this event and during the event that really do not make sense. And we see this many times in other false flag. I'm not saying 100% it was a false flag, but it's certainly showing a sign of being an inside job with uh, Zionist interference. Middle East consultant in London, Peter Ayer. Thank you. Get your taser out, and we're going to roll him over on his bed. And if he even flinches, shoot his ass. Do you understand that? We are going to roll you over on your bed. And if you move, you will be tased with votes of electricity. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? Well, uh, roll him over. Roll him. Put your hands all right in front of you. Roll over to your left. Tase him. Tase him. Tase him. Tase him. Roll over on your bed. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Back off. Tase him again. Ah! Get on your stomach! 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 
Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, July 29th, 2011. I'm Darko. This is part two of this news bulletin. GGNonline.com is my website. That's www.ggnonline.com. Um, also, DDarko2012 is my YouTube channel, so go check that out. I posted most of my videos there. Um, also, over here, this little button right here, uh, you can click there, and uh, it'll show you all the articles or video news videos that I've posted. So... Um, all right, so you just saw that lovely video of that uh, man uh, basically refusing to get on his stomach and capitulating to uh, basically to the fraternal order, and um, they don't like that, so they just they'll just uh, keep tasing you and beating you, and they don't understand why an individual doesn't want to comply with them by rolling on their stomach because it is a sign of submitting to their authority, and uh, really. The only authority that we that they have over us is the one that we give them. So, London to recognize NTC as Libyan government. British Foreign Office has given Libyan embassy staff in London three days to leave, saying Britain will officially recognize Libya's National Transitional Council as the sole governmental authority in the country. So it's just complete crap. Like I said before, can you imagine that? If Libya just said, uh, "Yeah, you know what, U.S. Embassy, you guys got to go because we don't, you know, we don't really support your government. We want a, we want a government that's going to be more uh, conducive to our um, agenda, our needs." So I want you to go ahead and clear out. Yeah, uh, it says here, fellow Libyan rebels accused in military chiefs killing, so their own people killed them. It says here, a rebel special forces member accused fellow Libyan uh, rebels on Friday of killing the movement's military chief, pointing to a potentially major split in the ranks of his opposition battling Muammar Gaddafi. Next up, Bahraini forces surround U.S. embassy. They've massed around the embassy in the capital to prevent a scheduled protest sit-in outside the U.S. diplomatic compound. Uh, Egypt, Islamist secular forces joined mass protests in Cairo, tens of thousands packed into the Tahir Square on Friday in a joint protest by Islamists and secular groups. The rally was supposed to be a show of unity in defense of anti Mubarak revolution, but has been uh, basically dominated a uh, chance for an Islamic state. Next up, we have saboteurs bomb Syrian oil pipeline, and they've damaged a pipeline with a bomb close to Syria's uh, Zistal uh, Kalak near the border with Lebanon. Then we have most Germans oppose Saudi deal, so here we go again with that tank story. Recent opinion polls found that a majority, a large majority of people in Germany oppose the country's decision to sell 200 advanced Leopard 2 tanks to Saudi Arabia, then blast disrupts Iran gas flow to Turkey. Explosion in Iran's natural gas transmission line to Turkey has temporarily disrupted the gas supplies to Iran's western neighbor, report says. Then we have Turkey's military chief resigns, and uh, why? Well, it says here that... Um, that uh, along with the heads of the Army, Navy, Air Force have resigned over a row with government media reports. It says four generals resigned on Friday, Friday reportedly over a row with the government about promotions for generals and admirals held in an alleged anti-government plot. Then Israel not to apologize to Turkey over killing nine Turkish activists. Then U.S. intelligence says al Qaeda uh, near collapse. So the CIA is saying that the CIA is near collapse. So it's here, uh, Iran accused of al Qaeda's secret deal by U.S. officials. So um, let's go over this again. U.S. intelligence, Al-Qaeda near collapse. 
Iran accused of al-Qaeda secret deal by U.S. officials. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Iran blames uh, U.S. Israel for killing of scientists. Parliament Speaker says terrorist U.S.-Israeli action is another example of uh, level of U.S. animosity towards Iran. That's what a senior of, uh, Iranian official said. And you can go in there and check that out. Links will be posted in the video's description on YouTube. Uh, former French FM Israel controls French intelligence lobby pressures U.S. President. Former French Foreign Minister Roland Dumas referred in a book he published entitled Coup de uh, Blushers says that Israelis are doing whatever they want in France and are the controlling the French intelligence with what serves them. Next up, we have U.S. may cut financial aid to Israel, and the U.S. State Department uh, has reportedly recommended an end to Washington's loan guarantee program to Israel amid Tel Aviv's growing distrust of President Barack Obama, or Bayer Satoro, says here, anti-government protests in Israel spread over lower housing prices and improved social conditions. Then we have this former intel chief stopped the drone strikes, and the former director of uh, national intelligence, Dennis Blair, unloaded on the White House Thursday evening, strongly criticizing the administration's reliance on the U.S. directed drone strikes and saying the officials have failed to implement the lessons of September 11th by backing away from efforts to integrate the intelligence. So, uh, yeah, these drone strikes in Pakistan, Yemen, and now Somalia. Somalia, uh, that's right, Somalia, because the missiles fired from the unmanned aircraft are fueling anti-American sentiment and undercutting reform efforts in those countries. FBI teaches new recruits to read anti-Islam books. It says here, the slideshow shows the FBI for training new agents told them that Islam transforms a uh, country's culture into 7th century Arabian ways and is hard for Westerners to understand. It said that Muslims were swayed more by ideas than facts. Go in there and check it out. Cote d'Ivoire, talking about uh, the Ivory Coast, says more than a half a million people remain displaced by the post-election conflict and many are too afraid to return home for fear of ethnic reprisals. It says here that serious human rights violations include torture and forced disappearance and um, extrajudicial executions, says uh, the London-based human rights organization, says the forces loyal to Adoraro, that was the UN-backed guy, the president, were reportedly involving in killings, mass killings, that's what they were, and other abuses during the battle to oust Lauren Bagbo. Then here, here we go, Nigeria, six Lagos politicians found unconscious in the back of a car. Read that, that's interesting. Then Kenya, torture by police, still high, says study. Horn of Africa famine spreads, slipping into famine, the UN warned. And look at this. Oh, see, look at that. They're behind barbed wire. That's that's what you call a refugee camp. Thousands flee crisis in Somalia. There goes the UNICEF tents. And I feel sorry for these people because they're having to travel almost 17 miles on foot with all their family and that to avoid this. But this is a bigger problem. This isn't just famine. This is a political thing. And it's not because they have a, quote, failed state. It's because of intervention by foreign governments into this area of the world. And now they're drone striking them and whatnot. And, uh, you know, it says here, now Kenya stands on brink of its own famine and uh, says here that Kenya urges camps inside Somalia it says Kenya is urging UN to set up camps inside Somalia to save refugees at risk of dying from hunger then we have West to blame for African famine tens of thousands of people are dying of starvation in the Horn of Africa due to some Western nations policy to ignore economic developments there says on net. so then you have this Somalia rebels deny lifting ban on foreign aid groups and says Al Shabaab spokesman says specific agencies are still not welcome in the drought affected areas and rejects UN famine claims so all kinds of money have, has been pouring into this uh, area now, uh, the Iranians, the Chinese, uh, the Canadians, the UK, uh, many countries have been, uh, I think even Venezuela, have been pouring money into this country. And so there should be enough food for them to stay in Somalia and be able to have uh, at least some kind of a healthy, clean water and food and not the UN GMO stuff, but that's probably what they'll get. But either way, there's just a lot of stuff that's not being said here on this situation as they're being herded into these camps and uh, their areas being drone bombed. And you also have CIAs uh, about six months to a year ago, also ex-CIA and contractors from the U.S. and the West training uh, anti-Al-Shabaab forces. So after Al-Shabaab basically said we never lifted the ban on the UN, six die in offensive to protect Somali relief efforts. So African Union forces killed six people Thursday in an offensive aimed at protecting famine relief efforts from attacks by LCIA to links to militants in Somalia's capital. And nothing comes without a price. So if you accept aid from the UN, you're accepting all the vaccinations, you're accepting all the loans with interest, and uh, all that good stuff that comes with it. Now, I don't agree with this, but Al-Shabaab militants already have killed men who try to escape the famine with their families saying it's better to starve than to accept from the West. And this is the way they see it. These guys, 
uh, you know, and it sucks because where are these people going to go? They're going to go to Kenya where there's another famine and it just gets ugly and ugly, ugly. So, and it's not because they're a stateless society. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.